you came here to move. Showing up tonight, so to show and prove. I know you feel so good when you're feeling the groove. And I can show you how it's done. But hold on, not so fast. You got to feel it, make the fire last. You want to feel it from me, I want to feel it from you. I say, what you gonna do? Oh, what you gonna do to me? You like it, you like it. Oh, what a play! Slams it home. Absolute madness. Fire in his heart. The big blue to the big easy. And Louisville will go to the final four. There's no better place than here. There's no better time than now. Welcome, America, to New Orleans for the NCAA Final Four. Y'all bring it, you hear? Even Mayor Landrew welcoming the world back to New Orleans and the Final Four back here for the first time since 2003. Coming up, national semifinal game number one, Louisville and Kentucky with the winner to take on Ohio State or Kansas. They'll be second up on the floor here in the Dome here later on tonight. Hello, friends. Jim Nance along with Steve Kirk, Clark Kellogg. We got out the, the beads yes, and the, the best in college basketball. And I could say maybe the best day of the year in sport. I well, love you this said, day. You've said it the last three years I've been with you, and I'm going to agree with you. Nothing's <laughs> changed. A special Saturday. And there's so much energy in here today. It's crazy, especially with this one coming up. Louisville against Kentucky. Tell me about the Cardinals. What to look for. Well, you know what? It starts with Peyton Siva. The point guard is certainly the Cardinal who creates, not only for himself with his excellent speed, but also for his teammates in the paint. It's Shane behind the outstanding freshman who continues to improve. Along the defensive back line is Gorgie J. This guy has been a terrific shot blocker all season long. Turnovers to points is what we look for from Louisville. We're going to show you a little closer look at what Louisville likes to do defensively. They'll mix defenses, a variety of presses, but when they put heat on you in the backcourt, they're looking to disrupt you and possibly turn you over. Everybody's in sync. They're rotating aggressively to the ball. Tremendous heat applied to the ball, which can often lead to turnovers. That's from Kentucky's seven-point win in the earlier matchup this season. What about the Wildcats, Steve? Well, this is a dominant team for a reason, Jim, because they can get you at both ends of the floor. They average nine blocks per game. And then at the other end, the freshman Michael Kidd Gilchrist had a nightmare matchup for Louisville. He had 24 and 19 in the matchup earlier. And then Terrence Jones, I think the X factor. When he plays well, the Wildcats are unbeatable. Clark mentioned the pressure Louisville will put on. I think the key will be it's a group effort for Kentucky. Michael Kidd Gilchrist has the ability to handle the ball against pressure and then more importantly finish and make Louisville pay for that pressure at the other end. So strong, a fantastic freshman. Can't wait. Louisville, Kentucky, and it's coming up next here on CBS. It's all red and blue inside the dome in New Orleans for Louisville and Kentucky. And the fourth member of our team calling the game is Tracy Wolfson. Thanks a lot, Jim. All week, all eyes have been on Kentucky's Anthony Davis, who banged his knee in the Baylor game last week. He did finish out that game, but afterwards he said it was sore and it, it was tightening up a little bit. So all week he kind of rested it. He rode the bicycle, practiced limitedly, and then he iced it completely all week. And we saw him yesterday in the open practice. He did not look limited at all. And then afterwards, he declared himself 100%, guys. Wow. Now, that's, of course, good news for Davis and Kentucky. And we'll be back to New Orleans in just a moment. Welcome back, America, to New Orleans. And ladies and gentlemen, please rise to honor America and those who support our freedom at home and abroad. Presenting the colors 
are members of the United States Naval Air Station Joint Reserve Base, New Orleans. Also, welcome Grammy Award-winning R&B artist Monica in the performance of our national anthem. I'll say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly Welcome back to the final four on CBS and let's bring it in house appearing in their ninth final four and their first since 2005. Please welcome the Big East Conference Tournament Champions the University of Louisville Cardinals. Let's go. See the great pass. What's not to like? Let me hear you. The big easy awaits. We are cool. Starting tonight for the Louisville Cardinals at forward, a senior from Evansville, Indiana, number 14, Kyle Keurig. At forward, a freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio, number 24, Shane Bahannon. At center, a sophomore from Kebamir, Senegal, number 10, Gorgi Jang. At guard, a junior from Seattle, Washington, number three, Peyton Siva. At guard, a senior from Millstone, New Jersey, number five, Chris Smith. They achieved the perfect 16-0 SEC conference record and a 36-2 overall mark. Now in their 15th Final Four, here are the top-seeded University of Kentucky Wildcats. Let me hear you, Big Blue 
Jason. Three point shot. Jones! Count it. He's got it. They can blow you out in seconds. Davis dumps it down. Oh my goodness! We are. We are. We are Kentucky. Tonight for the Kentucky Wildcats, a forward, a sophomore from Portland, Oregon, number three, Terrence Jones. At forward, a freshman from Summerdale, New Jersey, number 14, Michael Kidd Gilchrist. At forward, a freshman from Chicago, Illinois, number 23, Anthony Davis. At guard, a sophomore from Queens, New York, number 20, Deron Lamb. At guard, a freshman from Indianapolis, Indiana, number 25, Marcus Teague. And introducing the head coaches for Louisville in his 11th season for the Cardinals, Rick Patino. For Kentucky in his third season for the Wildcats, John Calipari. All right, Clark, Steve, there's some excitement in this house right now. Time for basketball, <laughs> finally, partners. Looking forward to it. Here is the Louisville Cardinals' road to the Final Four. Davidson, a tight one, seven-point win. This was in Portland, then New Mexico, 5-3 to get on to the Sweet 16, a spot Patino's never lost in, knocking out the number one seed, Michigan State, in that game to get to the regional final. And then that comeback, that 20-5 stretch to close it, to win it, to make it back for the first time since 2005 to the Final Four. And there's Coach Patino, who has come here three different times to New Orleans with three different programs to the Final Four. Here is Kentucky's road to Western Kentucky. And then Iowa State in round three. On to the South Regional action in Atlanta. Indiana, what a shootout that was. A thrilling <laughs> game. And then Baylor had the Bears by 20 at halftime and won at 82 to 70. You know what jumps out to me, guys, is that run that Kentucky's had in the tournament. All those games were very comfortable matchups for them. Indiana, Baylor, Iowa State, they all like to get up and down the floor. Louisville will make things very uncomfortable for Kentucky. They haven't played a style like this in several weeks. How can they adapt and how quickly can they do so? That's a terrific point you make, Steve. I think Kentucky is versatile enough to handle whatever they see. But you're right, they have not seen it on this tournament run. And it's all about how you respond and perform and execute within this 40-minute space that's about to tip off now. Les Jones, Doug Shouse, Joe DeRosa, the Officials with the honor of officiating this one. Let the final four begin, and Bahannon steals the tap. It looked like it was going back to Teague, but a smart play as the Cardinals get first possession. Ted Gilchrist matching up with Peyton Siva. He's got the quickness, but he also has about six inches on him. Chris Smith hits the opening jumper, and the Cardinals With a nice start to this one, 69-62. Kentucky beat them on New Year's Eve day. And Kentucky shot its lowest percentage of the season in that game, under 30% in the win. But they mauled Louisville at the foul line in that game, Jim, and on the backboard. Louisville, as expected, starting in a zone, and Marcus T continuing his outstanding play of the last six weeks. 
Big basket for Teague, I think, early on. If there's a vulnerable player on Kentucky against this kind of pressure, it's Teague. He's turnover prone. He had five of them in that matchup you talked about, Clark. So I think it's imperative for Teague to get off to a comfortable start here. Louisville team with 30 wins on the season. 30 and 9 won the Big East tournament, and Steve on the drive lost it out of bounds. It's going to Kentucky. Steve, we talked about Peyton Siva and his ability to create. He's got to be at the top of his game here. In the first meeting, over-penetrated and teed up a bunch of block shots for Anthony Davis. He's got to penetrate with the idea of creating for other people and not necessarily going all the way to the rim. Look at Teague scoring again, driving in on the Cardinals. Well, we know Louisville will put a lot of pressure on Teague and everybody on Kentucky, so it's up to them to to be poised but attack when they have an, an opportunity to do so. Teague reading the game well here in the early on. It's Jang. He's got Davis behind him. Davis trying to defend. Jones comes over and blocks it. And Kid Gilchrist picks it up for the Wildcats. His Kentucky team set a record, all-time record, most blocked by a team in a season in college history. Lamb with the baseliner in Kentucky. Three for three to open the game. You can see here early on, Louisville very content to walk it up. Operate pick and roll action for Siva now trying to open up the floor for him. Keurig with the jumper, back of the rim, and Davis pulls it down with two hands. Up ahead to Lamb driving it. He lays it in, and that's eight unanswered by Kentucky, and Patino says, I've seen enough. Timeout Cardinals, 8-2 Kentucky. Let's take a quick look at the Infinity Coaches Spotlight. Coach Patino, the first to take three schools, actually, to a Final Four. Calipari was the second to take three different programs. And you got the fact he's taken them multiple times. Talking about Coach Patino. It's pretty remarkable what he's done. Six Final Fours in all. And I think he called that timeout just to settle his team down, to remind them that, hey, we were down big to Florida all last week. We know we can handle this, but now it's a matter of executing, getting a good shot, and then trying to contain Kentucky defensively. Too much penetration so far. Yeah. Exactly. Three of the first four field goals have been at the rim, guys. You can't allow that for a high-octane team. You've got to make them shoot challenge jump shots. Back to Lamb, the trailer. Tapped out to Smith. Got to attack here. Chris Smith attacking Lamb. Puts it up off the glass. Beautiful shot. I love it. I love it. You have to be aggressive if you're Louisville. You cannot expect to play a slow down half court game and stay with Kentucky. You've got to take your opportunities in the open court and get to that basket. Well, they have no advantages in the half court offensively that they can go to. So you're right. Unless they run and force turnovers and create offense, they have no chance. Let's see if they can do a job here keeping the ball from getting to the rim off the dribble. Kentucky with seven on the shot clock. Does Teague know it? Teague, oh, sure he what a start for Teague. Two-point basket, he's got six. Lamb has the other four. But you get an idea of what Louisville wants to do defensively. They play that matchup zone, they try to confuse you. They'll morph it into a man-to-man -man late in the shot clock. And Kentucky really got bailed out by Teague on that possession. Teague's been excellent in the tournament, guys. 15 points a game, five assists, three rebounds, and a two-to-one assist-to-turnover ratio. Outstanding play. Chris Smith. Jang tapped it around, but picked up by Davis. Gets a slashing lamb to Jones. Lost it on the way up, but right back to a teammate. Kid Gilchrist through the hands of Davis, and numbers here, three on one. Oh, a hand and misses the dunk, no foul. Keurig steps up to pick it up, puts it off the glass, and one. What a shot that was. Keurig alertly went up and grabbed the missed dunk and took it to the rack and drew the foul.
tournament summary here in New Orleans. These four teams, 49 Final Four appearances, second most to OA down in San Antonio and Kansas, Memphis, North Carolina, and UCLA congregated. And all four of the coaches here have coached in a national title game with Patino and Bill Self winning. Coach Cal and Bad Mata both taking teams to the championship game, looking for their first titles. And Cura coming to the line off the foul of Kid Gilchrist. You know, after that little skirmish there where Behannon misses the dunk, Cura gets it back and lays it up, and he'll have a chance for the and one here. The only way Louisville has a chance to win this game is they've got to make it chaotic. It's got to be frenetic and wild. Yeah. That's the only way they have a chance. If they try to slow it down, they minimize any chance because they are best in transition and in an open court game. And they've got to trust that they can get some turnovers and miss shots from Kentucky. The big guy glides to the basket. That's the first shot taken by the Kentucky front line. And Davis able to lay it up and in as they broke the press. Laying it up for Jake. It looked like a pass, but instead, it's rebounded by Kentucky. That was put up by Russ Smith, counted as a shot. Always with him, it's a shot. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah that. for sure. Right that reputation. Said he takes the most shots per minute of any player probably in the country. Well, look at the other end again. Davis comes right out of that break. Hits a couple of shots, and Kentucky has its largest lead here in the opening minutes. Now, don't forget, Russ Smith had 30 in that earlier matchup back in December, so he has some confidence that he can get it done against this defense. And it was only a three-point game at the end of the first half in that meeting back in late December, and Russ Smith was a huge catalyst in that. A tie-up as T got in there with Jang, and the arrow belongs to Kentucky, and here comes another sub now onto the floor for Louisville. Wayne Blackshear, freshman from Chicago who joined them late in the year. He had a torn labrum and a highly recruited player he was out of uh, Anthony Davis's home city there mm -hmm. of Chicago and he'll be uh, called on to do great things at at Louisville once he gets fully healthy next year. And guys, this is, I think, the key to the game, is how Kentucky handles the pressure. We saw a near turnover there. Teague almost committing a back court violation. But this is where Louisville can score by forcing turnovers and getting out and running. Smith, Chris Smith short with the shot. Kentucky has Darius Miller, number one on the floor. The senior, here he is, and he can shoot it. This is a three. Rattles out, pulled down by Hannon. I like this pace for Louisville. They've got to be able to knock down some quick hitting shots. There you go. Oh, you got to make Jang misses a dunk. That's two missed dunks already for Louisville. Kid Gilchrist sliding to the other end, and that's a charge call, and the second foul on Kid Gilchrist. That's a big number, Jim. Here's Gorgie Zhang just takes his eye off of it. He actually overran the goal. By the time he got the ball up over his head, he was underneath the basket. And the one weakness I've really seen from Kentucky this year, guys, is their transition defense. I mean, we, we saw Florida earlier this year. They ran right past the Wildcats on four or five possessions in the second half. They don't always pick up their men quick enough, and that's, again, why Louisville will continue to try to push the pace. Exactly, Steve. Louisville shooting only 27%. Kid Gilchrist sitting down now. Jones back on the floor. Bounce pass, Jang loses the handle down low. Rough start. Jones drives through Terrence Jones. He's not going to miss that dunk. <laughs> and Kentucky's not going to try to slow it down. I mean, they're perfectly comfortable playing a high pace as long as they execute, keep their poise, and take care of the ball. Exactly. They love this. No, they do, and they're excellent at it. Louisville has to tighten things up, squeeze that orange a little better, and finish good shots. The Hannon drives on just swatted away by the best in the nation, Anthony Davis. And great recognition defensively from Jones, knowing that Bahannon is just six for 34 from the three-point line on the year. So he backs off him. Bahannon drives, and Jones knows he's got the country's best shot blocker behind him to help. That's a nice security blanket, guys, when you've got Anthony Davis as your last line of defense. Doesn't get any better than that. His 176th block of the season, blowing out the Kentucky record book for a single season. Here's Blackshear. He was fouled. He was hit by Terrence Jones. 
miscommunication defensively, exactly. right? There. Kentucky switched everything defensively, but I don't think Jones quite got the memo from Miller. He did not. And that should have been a switch. You're right, Steve. And John Calipari got all over Darius Miller for not switching. But that's a communication issue. There you see, John, on top of his players there, because that's a foul that need not be committed had they switched effectively. And it'll be three at the line. That one well short. It's only the 15th. Game play for Blackshear, Jim. You mentioned how he joined the team late after that injured shoulder. And he gets the roll there. Yeah, he missed the first 24 games. A big boost for the Cardinals. Of course, that means he did not play in the first matchup against Kentucky. And he's important in this game. You know, when we talked to Rick Patino yesterday, he said, we feel like we're deeper than Kentucky. And even though they're they're really versatile and they're strong, we feel like we can maybe break them mentally, maybe wear them down as the game goes on. And it's going to take a big effort from that Louisville bench to, to give them the strength uh, to be able to sustain that effort. And they brought in another sub, number 21, Jared Swapshire. And he can give them valuable minutes. He sure does, Jim. He's an excellent rebounder. He can defend a couple of positions. Not really a shooter, but can score the ball a little bit in the mid-range game. And that is Jang pulling down the rebound. Louisville's missed its last four shots from the field. And here's Chris Smith who hit the first two of the game. Another block by Davis, his second. Wiltshire on the floor for Kentucky, 33. Siva bounce pass. Jang just doesn't have the hands to hold on to it down low. A couple of times it's gotten away from him. Jones at this end. Terrence Jones missing, and Jang has the rebound. I think Peyton Siva has to really be judicious in his penetration. He's got to penetrate. Oh, my goodness. That is Blackshear. A little double pump on the way up. Steve, you talked about him being important. That could very well be the launching pad for his confidence yeah. level the rest of this ball game. Yeah, there was a serious launch right there, Clark. <laughs> and that yeah. wasn't a fast break basket, but it was kind of a secondary transition type where Kentucky's defense is out of sorts. And that's Blackshear at this end with a rebound. That last uh, dunk broke a three minute and 50 second stretch without a basket from the floor. I really would like to see Siva penetrate to the middle of the lane and jump stop for opportunities to kick out the open shooters. He over penetrated there again. Kentucky is just too big for him to finish against effectively and consistently. So he's got to back it down just a notch and use that speed to get into the middle of the lane and then jump stop and find people outside. Yeah, the, and the issue for Louisville, though, is they don't have that stretch four, that guy who can step out like Wiltshire can, for example, for Kentucky. St stretch the defense out and bring some of those Kentucky bigs out onto the floor. And that is Miller able to weave through traffic. Senior from Maysville, Kentucky. The SEC sixth man of the year and having a huge tournament. Yeah, he is so solid, Jim Darius Miller. Good curl by Blackshear and a good look. Good work by Shop Swapshire in there trying to keep it alive, but you got to get back in transition now. Five rebounds by Davis. And here's Miller again. Fouled. Fouled in the act of shooting. It's called on Siva. We've got a break in the action. Activate a little virtual madness here, guys. Taking a look at Anthony Davis running the floor. He's highlighted in the middle of your screen. Going to get a clean post up here. Louisville elects not to double team him. They're in position to help, but he's one on one with Gorgie Zhang. And AD, who shoots over 60% from the floor, goes right to the little turnaround jump hook. Beautifully done. And the knee again is fine. We were there in Atlanta last week, Steve, and when he had the knee on knee yeah. collision there with PJ3 of Baylor for a minute there, it looked really serious. It really did, Jim. I thought he was going to be out, but he got stronger as he continued to stay on the floor. So that was a good indication as Darius Miller 
shooting free throws here and looking to push this Kentucky lead to double digits. You know, they reviewed during that timeout whether or not Miller was in the act of shooting when he was fouled by Siva. Very close call, but he was awarded the two free throws, and he hits them both for a double-up lead at 20 to 10. See, I want to go back to that point you made about not having a legitimate stretch for a guy who can knock down the perimeter shot effectively for Louisville. I still think a quality open shot versus a forced drive and try to finish by Siva is better, even though you don't have the knockdown shooter. I agree. I just don't know if they can execute it. I mean, you look at Louisville's numbers for the year, they're a 42% shooting team from the floor, 32 from the three-point line. In the half court, you see how difficult it is for them to get anything to go against this Kentucky defense. Well, Al Davis jumps off the stage, which uh, pretty good <laughs> Probability that was going to happen. And he lands safely, but he was out of bounds right there. He got bumped by Bahannon there. He could Bahannon could have been called for a foul there as he helped Davis go out of bounds. I'll tell you though, much better flow to this game than that first meeting between the two clubs. That was a foul fest. It really was. Everybody on Louisville was in foul trouble by the end of the first half. Ball tapped around into the hands of Jones. You mentioned, Clark, how much Kentucky out-rebounded Louisville in the first matchup. Out-rebounding them by 26 boards. Yeah. That's including 20. Number. I think they had 20 on the offensive glass. That was the reason they won. They, they shot free throws and they got second chance points because offensively they shot 29% against Louisville that day. No double team. Jane going to try to defend Davis all alone. And that's an offensive foul. That is going to be the first on Davis. John Calipari claiming that Zhang is giving him the lower body bump. But I think Davis has to recognize if he can't get into his moves quickly, he's not strong yeah. enough to back a guy down. He's got to use the skill set he has, which is typically quickness and going over defenders as opposed to trying to thump and bump them out of the way. Louisville's missed nine of its last ten. Jang over Wiltshire, his first basket of the game. Well, they switched Davis off of Jang because of that first foul, and Louisville did the right thing. They went right into Jang against Wiltshire, where he has the advantage. Wiltshire puts it up, no, taps it up and in. The freshman from Oregon follows it up. That kid, Kyle Wiltshire, is a very skilled offensive player. He sure is, is a summer of weight room work away from being a really impact player for Kentucky going forward, I think. And the steal by Davis. And to Jones, led him too much. Going back to Louisville, we've got the under eight break. But Kentucky has a 10 point lead. Back here at the Final Four, Jim Nance, Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr, and Tracy Wolfson. And look at Kentucky so far, almost 60% from the field. And Anthony Davis, a couple of blocks, five rebounds, a couple of hoops. Stuffing the stat sheet here in the early going. Going, Jim. Doing it with a nice turnaround jump hook there. He's the best shot blocker in the country. And plays with a poise that belies his youth. I've never seen the kid rattled no. or flustered. And I've covered Kentucky five times in person from the beginning of the year. And this young man has a poise and disposition and discipline that is remarkable. How about the array of moves offensively, too? I mean, that first drive we showed, it was like a guard play. Mm -hmm. And then he goes to the center post-up move down on the block with a jump hook. Chang. Is pinned. Unlucky yeah. there. Yeah, the ball will stay with Louisville. The arrow will decide that. And Rick Patino has finally found something that he likes, which is the Jang Wilcher matchup. So he's pounded it inside to Jang three consecutive possessions. Wiltshire not quite strong enough to handle him, but Jang really not an offensive force. Not polished yet, Steve. He's made great improvement from early this year to now, but you're right. Not nearly as polished as you'd like him to be. Russ Smith somehow got it outside. Jang's jumper, no. Oh. And that was knocked out by Terrence Jones. Coming up, AT&T at the half. Greg Gumbel, Greg Anthony, Seth Davis, Kenny Smith, and Charles Barkley. We'll break down the first half. Look ahead to tonight's second 
game between Ohio State and Kansas and a Naismith watch presented by AT&T coming up on AT&T at the half. You know, another reason it's important to get quality shots if you're Louisville, it gives you a chance to offensive rebound the ball. Turnover, or it would have been. Instead, it's a foul in the backcourt, and that's probably not a bad foul. But it's the second, second one on Siva. Remember, he was in foul trouble last week against Florida in that regional final. In fact, fouled out yeah, with got, four minutes to go. Yeah, he got DQ, Derek yeah. Queen in that one, and they've still found a way to finish yeah. that game with. I think you mentioned, Jim, a 20 to 5 run to well, close out that game yeah. against Florida. Yeah, and the bulk of the way without him. Yeah, yeah. just and amazing what they did. And the strength of the team really is the guard play with Russ Smith and Chris Smith. They're very quick. They've got guys who can handle the ball. They did a great job without Siva. Question right now, Clark, is you know, where do they find an open shot? I think they've got to bring Curich and Chris Smith off some doubles, off some stagger screen, screens. Try to get them an open look because there's nothing doing inside. Yeah, I agree with you. You gotta try to get the ball in your shooter's hands in good position to knock down open shots. To the extra, corner. extra pass. And the extra pass sets up Lamb. Back of the rim to Curek and Siva up ahead to James. And that's Davis getting back to deflect it out of bounds. Young fellas, nothing, nothing's wrong with that knee. No. I can tell you that. <laughs> He's made a couple of plays tonight where he is certainly 100 percent Look at him hustle back. And get a hand on that ball. Yeah, he's jumped already off the stage <laughs> a couple of times. Well, with this elevated floor, players on both sides really have to be careful in situations like that. I mean, there's about a six-foot drop if you, if you have to go off the floor at the end of the court. Siva comes out of the game as Russ Smith puts it up and in for the Cardinals. Siva sits down and Chris Smith comes back onto the floor. Here's Lamb wanting to drive it and lob it. A little too high somehow. Never thought you'd say that for Davis. Six minutes to go in the half. And another jumper. No, as Russ Smith was going for back-to-back -back buckets. Teague blows by him. Teague looking around. Sees Jang and he'll pull it back out. Good play there from T. I mean, that's important for him to recognize when they have the advantage and when they don't. And now they can run their half-court stuff. T. Oh. Not going to be too steep this time. Oh. Guys, I think we have the two best lob teams in the country here in New Orleans. One is Kentucky, the other is Kansas. I agree. But that's big time talent there because that was not a really good pass. And it actually the pass was slightly deflected. But just throw it up there anywhere and <laughs> Davis will get it. Diana, the like freshman that. who's looked awfully good here during the tournament and was the most outstanding player of the West Regional. Yeah, 17 points and seven rebounds in that game, Jim, against Florida. That's going against Teague. Go get it, Anthony Davis. No matter where it is. <laughs> Just get it in the neighborhood. Yeah, Jang got a little fingertip on it, but Davis stayed with it. Teague picks up his first, and here comes Louisville. Down by eight. That's the third offensive foul called on Kentucky. As we move inside of five minutes. Russ Smith, that bounce pass, no one there. This year, enjoy more madness with Coach Zero. Text 2013 to 2653 for a chance to win a trip to next year's 2013 NCAA Men's Final Four will be in Atlanta for the 75th playing of the Final Four. Kentucky's been a little shaky with this pressure, but it hasn't resulted in turnovers to this point. I think Louisville can maintain that pressure and ultimately force some mistakes. Davis over Jack. Oh, come on. Left-hander this time. Come on. Man, oh man. Up ahead, Bahannon pulls it down. High arching shot drops for the Cardinal freshman. Rick right. Pitino yesterday talked about him. He said he reminds me a little bit 
of Rodney McRae. I can Remember see the that. former Cardinal, oh, just uh -huh. the body type. Yep. One of the greats. Yep. Stolen. Stolen by Russ Smith. Russ Smith lays it up and in. And Steve, you called it. Little you ball. talked about them being a little shaky with that ball. Coach Calipari takes that ball right on the hands of Lamb and calls a timeout. Five days from the start of the Masters, and Masters Live will stream exclusive video of Amen Corner 15 and 16 and featured group. For more, go to cbssports.com slash masters and masters.com. Did you guys see that? Coach Cal just taking a snatch in the ball right out of the hands of Lamb as they called the timeout. Well, he's so concerned about handling pressure, and with Kid Gilchrist on the bench with the two fouls, he's got one fewer ball handler mm -hmm. to deal with this. And the reason Louisville's good with this is it's a, it's a an intense man-to-man -man That's pressure. Right. That's right. And they don't want to commit to the trap because they know Kentucky can beat them over the top. So they're really trying to force mistakes by the ball handler. Exactly. They want to take your lunch right from you. Back to Lamb. Jang commits the foul. The basket counts. And another timeout in the first half here. Three-point opportunity coming up. Back in New Orleans, we talked about Louisville's difficulty scoring in the half court. They're a, a pick and roll team. That's their bread and butter. But look how good Kentucky is at covering lanes and shrinking the floor. Their bigs don't get out and hedge. What they do is they sink. And so they're telling Siva, if you want to shoot a, a 12 foot floater, go ahead. But you're not getting all the way to the rim. And so Siva and the other guards for Louisville, Russ Smith, Chris Smith, having a very difficult time finding anything off that pick and roll. And here's Lamb now, made the basket, was fouled by Jang. That's a big three-point play after Louisville cut it to six. Sure is, Jim, you're right. And we talked about how Louisville has to force turnovers right now. Louisville losing the turnover game. They've got eight turnovers. Kentucky only has seven. That has to flip if Louisville's going to have a chance to get all the way back in this one. And Jang doing a good job keeping the lot. Kira reload and hits the three. Well, here's the thing. I mean, they're they're down six after all this, right? They can't make a shot, but what they've done well is they've kept Kentucky off the foul line. Teague all the way. But what they haven't done well is stop layups. The vast majority of these 14 field goals that Kentucky has made have been at the yeah. rim. I kept waiting to see if he was going to really challenge Jang. He somehow was able to get the shot past the shot blocker for Louisville. But those layups are generally a result of the pressure as Bohannon gets loose underneath. If Louisville's going to commit to pressuring the ball, they're going to have to give up a few of those fast break baskets for Kentucky. So they've got to be very judicious with their decision making on the pressure defense. Yeah, I can go with a few. Not too many. It's been, <laughs> it's been a wide open gate, though. The pace picking up here in the last three minutes of the half. And that's a foul call on Louisville. It's country music's party of the year. Don't miss all your favorite stars live from Las Vegas at the Academy of Country Music Awards. That's tomorrow only on CBS, America's number one network. Now here's what I'm concerned about, guys. If I'm Kentucky, we're shooting 63%. Louisville's at 38%. It feels like it's been dominating, and yet it's a six-point game. This is what Rick Pitino and his club will do. They'll muck up the game. They'll make things difficult. And now they've got the shot blocking. As I mentioned, they're keeping Kentucky off the line. Only three free throw attempts for the Wildcats. And the rebounding battle is even. Yeah, you're calling it, Steve. And K Kentucky, coming into this game, had made 245 more free throws than its opponents on 311 more attempts. That was the second foul on Jones. And one thing to note, Kid Gilchrist has been sitting for a lot of this half. Still on the bench. Always a decision for college coaches. When you get that second foul, do you leave your guy on the bench for the remainder of the first half? It's a difficult decision, but I think Calipari feels like 
As long as he's got a little lead, he's comfortable doing so. He's been down for more than six minutes. And that's Bahannon fighting for it. Miller able to take it off the floor. There's Kid Gilchrist. Jones also out now with his second. And what a nice steal by Russ Smith. Over to Chris Smith. Back to Chang. And the basket counts. That's the way you operate a break. A spurt by Louisville, set up by the Smith steal. Behind the back by Chris Smith. And Jang the trailer got fouled by Miller on the way up. Basket counts. Chance to cut beautiful it. Beautiful basketball, Jim. Chance to cut it suddenly down to three guys. You never would have believed it the way the majority of this first half has been played. But I go back to what you just said, Steve. That's what Louisville does. It almost looks as though they're doing it with mirrors. Yeah. You wonder how is it happening, but they create chaos. They find little spurts within the game. And the point about not allowing Kentucky to dominate the free throw battle is big. Nearly taken away again by Russ McWilcher. He can shoot it. Three-pointer, yes. Big, big shot for Kentucky. The momentum was shifting. You could feel Kentucky tightening up a little bit. And that shot gives him a little breathing room, a little confidence. And Wilcher makes the steal in the lane. Lamb driving in, and he'll shoot two. Fouled by Blackshear. Wilcher was one of one from three in Atlanta in the Sweet 16. One of one from three against Baylor. And he hits his first three of this game on the wing again. You can't deny this young man's skill offensively. I mean, he's a little unorthodox. He's not very strong, but he can stroke it, and he knows what he's doing out there. I mean, he's not lucking into opportunities. He's got tremendous savvy and the requisite confidence to go with it. If you watch him play, you, you, you feel like he's a senior, you know? Mm -hmm. And on this team, I guess being a sophomore maybe qualifies <laughs> as being a senior. He's the guy with experience, but you start... You start, or excuse me, a, a freshman. I'm talking about Lamb, though, at the line, excuse me. But just talking about just the poise and, and the leadership he gives this club. He's, I think he's maybe the most reliable Kentucky Wildcat. Well, things have kind of picked up, haven't they? Haven't they? This, is, um, this building's been a little more energized over the last couple of possessions. It's a great sight. It's the fifth time the Final Four's been here. And they have all been memorable. Starting with the Carolina win for Dean Smith back in 82 and the Jordan jumper. Justice on the floor right now. The rule the 22. Kicking it back out. Bahannon with a three. Back of the rim. Watch out. Anthony Davis somehow is able to get right back up on the floor. That was stretching things out for a minute there, wasn't it? Yeah, Blackshear came underneath him after Davis had come up with the pumpkin. And that's an obvious foul, and there's John Calipari. <laughs> Second foul on Blackshear. Yeah, there's some. <laughs> yeah. Very animated, and Kyle Keurig returns. Blackshear and Justice going to sit the last 35 seconds here, and Kentucky should take the last shot here. And it looks like that's the plan. Boy, Louisville needs to stop. A basket here would give Kentucky a little more of a sense of comfort after the last minute and a half or so where Louisville actually grabbed some momentum. Ten seconds to go. So when you've got to start getting into what you're going to do. T gets past Smith. Denied. Picked up. Russ Smith launches it. Oh, back of the rim. Well, Gordon Hayward. Action. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> well, the last four points of the half go to Kentucky. A free throw by Lamb and the three by Wiltshire. After the Cardinals closed it down to three. But I think Louisville has to feel pretty good about where they are. They, you yeah. know, they were down to Florida at halftime and throughout most of that second half a week ago. This is who they are. They're just going to try to grind you, wear you down physically, and try to make Kentucky nervous. And I think they've, they're in a pretty good spot right now. Let's go over to Tracy. Well, thanks a lot. Coach, you came off shaking your head. Why? Well, we just gave up like eight offensive rebounds. I mean, that's what's killed us. I mean, we're guarding them. We're doing a good job. But 
they're getting second shots. And so now all of a sudden they're still in this game. And, you know, you get a chance the way we played to put somebody away a little bit. We didn't. So it's a three bucket game. It's a hard game from here on. Thanks a lot, Jim. Well, the lead was 10 on a couple of occasions. Seven is the margin at halftime. And we'll be back with Greg and the gang from New Orleans in a moment. 35 to 28, Kentucky led by Anthony Davis, Deron Lamb, Marcus Teague, all with eight points. Here's a little first half summary, Clark and Steve. Well, you take a look at Teague, get it, he had it going early, getting right to the rim. How about the offensive rebounding story, Steve? Plus six for Louisville. Yeah, they were able to be really physical with Kentucky, and I think it wore them down a little bit. But for Davis, he was able to go four for four, and most of the baskets were right there. You saw the jump hook from the lane. Everything in the paint, when Kentucky is poised and handles the ball, they can get good shots for their start. Louisville only shoots 43% from the field on the year. Ironic that all of their buckets, with the exception of two, have been in the paint so far. Let's go over to Tracy. Greg, your three guards, just eight points amongst them. How do you get them more involved in the second half? Well, we get better, play better defense, lower their field goal offense. We'll get on the break more and they'll get something. But Peyton played very, very tight. He's got to play a little looser and understand, regardless of the final four, regardless of the Superdome, it's a basketball game. And he's got to loosen up a little bit. He's too tight. Thanks a lot. Yeah, Siva, such a critical part of what they do. There he is, did not make a shot in that first half and committed three turnovers and a couple of fouls. And I think the other big story here is that Kentucky, I mentioned it later uh, in that first half, that only six minutes of action for Kid Gilchrist went the last really 14 minutes without playing with the two fouls, and yet they're still up seven. And we heard the guys at halftime talk about it. He, he's such an important part of their press offense. Uh, Louisville doing a nice job of disrupting the Kentucky offense in the in the backcourt. Kid Gilchrist is normally the guy who's the pressure release, and I think he's going to play a, an important role here in the second half with his ball handling. I agree with you wholeheartedly. He's a finisher at the end of the break. He's another ball handler, and this first couple of minutes is going to be huge because Kentucky is going to try to crack this thing open with Kid Gilchrist on the floor. The way they started the first half, that's how they're going to try to start this second half. Here is Kid Gilchrist. Cradles the ball and off the back of the rim. Kid Gilchrist has not scored in this one. Wide open shot from the corner. It's a three for Chris Smith who opened the game with a two-point basket. This one a three. But again, a good defensive stand, an unlucky break for Kid Gilchrist. And as Rick Patino said at halftime, if they stop. Kentucky from scoring, they have a chance to get some early offense at the other end. Lamb swatted away by Jang. It'll stay with Kentucky 13 seconds on the shot clock. That's Jang's fourth block. And if Kentucky goes a couple minutes here without a basket, it'll be interesting, Clark. You talk about it. These first few minutes. You know, it will determine a lot emotionally with where this game goes. And it's the favored team. It's the number one team that always is going to feel the most pressure. Let's see if Kentucky can be poised and stay in their game. Had to get the shot away, and the shot is good. By Lamb, who leads them with 10 points. Well, the Wildcats have six guys that average over 13 points a game in the tournament, so they come at you from a lot of different places offensively. And that's going to be on Teague. And for Teague, that's his second. Coming Sunday, April 15th, a new police drama from Robert De Niro and Jane Rosenthal, NYC 2-2. It's only on America's most watched network, CBS. So Chris Smith at the line. He's actually officially a walk-on Manhattan College transfer. His brother, J.R. Smith, Pays for his way through college. His brother JR actually lives here in New Orleans in the offseason. Pretty good basketball genes there. No, oh, no kidding. <laughs> He's a co captain here of this team. And he gets the second one to drop. That was only the second three pointer that Louisville has hit in this game. Chris Smith, the best of the three point shooters. And now that pressure defense. 
forces Kentucky to take a timeout. 37-32, Wildcats, early second half. Check out this replay on the virtual madness. A couple of different looks at it, Jim. We're going to show you the adjustment that Anthony Davis makes on this pass. Look how he has to extend behind himself to get it in the eyes. They look like my eyes when I'm going after a dozen points. Ready to eat. <laughs> Boy, that was a big time throwdown on a, on a pass that wasn't ideal, but good players and finishers catch bad passes, and that was a case in point there. Especially ones with seven foot four wingspans. That doesn't hurt a bit. <laughs> that does not hurt a bit, Steve. Up ahead, Terrence Jones back on a wing to Miller. Surrounded. And tied up. up, and that's going to oh, maybe not a foul. A foul is called on Drew Ooh. Smith. Wow. It would have been Louisville's ball on the arrow. My goodness, that's a tough one. Let's take another look at it. Dribbles into traffic. Good position with the feet. Mm. Wow. Looked like a hell ball to me. Every angle. First tough break for Louisville. Yeah, that's a big, big moment right there. They have gotten a piece of the arm, but got an awful lot of that pumpkin. Louisville stays in this matchup zone defense. Well, Kentucky having a hard time finding the penetration that they did early in the first half. Mm -hmm. But he can shoot right over top of Siva. There that he ball is Miller. Gets, that ball gets into the middle of that zone for a guy like Miller, then he's going to be able to get the shot he wants just like that. Miller has six in the game. You look on the floor, Kentucky has a size advantage at every position. So when the plays break down, I mean, they have guys who, as you mentioned, Clark, can just shoot right over the top. Mm -hmm. See that? That is a two. Still looking for it. Another Jay. offensive rebound. They had seven of those in the first half, did the Cardinals. That pass almost stolen away by Davis. The Hannon. He has it stripped away by Miller. Excellent defense by Darius Miller. He does a little bit of everything for this team, and he's very much undersung, but his value is immense. Lamb assuming the point guard duties now with Teague on the bench, and he's very capable. Excellent ball handler, good decision maker. Davis. Now a 10 on the game. I think John Calipari feels pretty comfortable with this lineup. Teague was a little out of sorts at times in the first half. He did some good things, but this group right here is more poised. Look at Miller. Kirk can't stop him. And a timeout, Louisville. The senior steps up. Hits a jumper a short while ago. Then gets the theft and the dunk. Kentucky has its largest lead at 11. It's an 8 to 1 Kentucky stretch, so Patino calls the timeout. Swapshire looking for someone to throw it into. Well, I like this strategy by Kentucky. Apply a little pressure. Don't just allow Louisville to walk into its offense. And Chris Smith unable to finish it. Davis there to sweep. Wildcats going for the jugular here, guys. You can just feel it and see it. They're looking to exploit the matchup advantages and try to create even more distance between them and the Cardinals. <laughs> And Anthony Davis will be headed to the line. Follow social media activity from tonight's game. Get live scores or watch live on your computer or mobile device with NCAA March Madness Live. Go to NCAA.com slash March Madness for more information. And on Swapshire, his first. And there is, there is Anthony's mother and father. Anthony Sr. and a Rainer. He is a twin, by the way, twin sister. She's uh, also a freshman at Kentucky, Antoinette. She's five foot six. As T comes back in, Lamb to the bench. And now Louisville, with that made free throw, has its largest 
deficit of the inside entire NCAA tournament. It's up to 13. Her son, who was just two years ago, six foot two, went through this incredible growing spurt with a guard in high school. So it was last year. And that's why you talked about earlier, his skills are like a guard. Lobbed up and put back down. And that's the value of the penetration. It may not lead to an immediate bucket, but it leads to offensive rebounding possibilities because you're drawing help defensively. And that was Keurig who followed it up off the Russ Smith shot. Breaks a three minute and 20 second drought. Davis and a reach in on Keurig. Second one on Keurig. These coaches, they go way back. And all kinds of emotion tied to this one. And these two meet on this kind of stage. Here are the vital numbers and Davis has not missed from the field, guys. Five out of five, and Kentucky seems like it's right on the edge, baby, of trying to break this open. And Miller with a couple of steals and some big shots. Yeah, he's been the catalyst for this run, Jim. Excellent anticipation there. And he does it at both ends. And he does it when his team seems to need it most. And getting to the foul line here the last couple of trips has been Anthony Davis, who has yet to miss a shot from the floor. That's what makes this team so tough. You know, they, you, you never know who's going to beat you. They, they have six players who average between 10 and 14 points per game. So a guy like Bill Kress gets in foul trouble, and there's Miller to step it up. If Miller doesn't get it going, Jones is the guy. They can move on. Everybody capable of scoring and making a, almost an individual run. That's why I think you have to be able to put pressure on Kentucky with your offense, because you're not going to shut them down. That so you, have, Smith. you have to be able to score the ball. If Louisville is going to get a chance, have a chance to get back into this game, they've got to put the ball in the basket. There's no other way around. They will not beat Kentucky on defense. Question is, can they do so? Right. You That's know, the question. How do they get scores? Stops, transition opportunities. Somebody's got to make a jumper or two. It would have to be Kyle Curick, Chris Smith, or Russ Smith to knock down some perimeter shots. Four on the shot clock for T. Outside Miller, short this time. And last touch by Davis, so back to Louisville. You talked about the pumpkin earlier, Clark, and for those of you at home, don't need to try to adjust the uh, color range on your television sets. Uh, the Louisville red is absent from these new uniforms, these <laughs> new fangled the, uniforms. I thought the pumpkin same color. Yeah, I thought the same thing, Jim, when I saw him come out. Well, when, I, when I think of zone defense and orange uniforms, I think Syracuse, <laughs> not Louisville. Smith unable to get the little floater on the floor. Uh, Smith was out of bounds with a go to Kentucky. I don't understand it either, really. When you you know you look at these uniforms, take a look at the replay here. We'll get a, a little better view. But to me, there you, you know, see him out of bounds there. But, but why do you why do you go with a, you know if you're Louisville, you got all kinds of tradition, the blood red tradition of Purvis Ellison and Rodney McRae. There's a charge there on Kid Gilchrist. Kind of a strange deal to go to a an orange uniform. This is the third foul on Kid Gilchrist. I agree with you, Steve. Boy, and I tell you what, it looked like Gorgie Jane jumped into him there. No question. I see, yeah, I think that should have gone the other way. He was in decent position, but then leaned in to get Kid Gilchrist. And Michael Kid Gilchrist probably going to watch for a while now and only a 10-point game. This is why I don't like that little restricted area zone underneath. It forces the officials to look at the feet and not the position. I think it makes the officials' job even more difficult, this being the first year of that restricted off. Anthony Davis hammers that one out of bounds for his third block. The pictures say it all, folks. Jang spinning. 
falling away from Davis. It slipped out of his hands on the way up. Curic, no. Jang taps it back outside to Russ Smith. A little floater short. Jang really fighting for it. And it'll stay with Louisville. A couple of really scrappy plays there by Gorgi Jang. Terrific effort, and you see Rick Pitino applauding that excellent second and third effort by his team as Wayne Blackshear returns. Kyle Curick going to take a seat. And these rebounding numbers are shocking. 13 to 2 on the offensive glass for Louisville. Remember, it was the opposite in the first meeting between these two clubs. Kentucky dominated. That's right, Steve. And Kid Gilchrist back in the game, even though he has three personal fouls. I'm a little surprised that he returns this soon. Smith, no. And Louisville had all those chances down low and unable to convert. Missing now its last six shots. Teague left alone. And that is a tie up and it's going to Louisville. And on the change of possession arrow. Well, this is a tad quick. Siva had the ball anyway, but that's a little quick to whistle that held ball. Worked out for Louisville either way. Smith in the lane. Yes, this time. Ross Smith out of Archbishop Malloy, where he played for the legendary Jack Curran. Uh, Russ Smith going to be called for the foul. He's really good at pressuring the ball, but that time he rode Teague a little too much. America's favorite geeks are back with a new Big Bang Theory Thursday only on CBS America's number one network. First foul on Russ Smith. Mark, you mentioned somebody has to make a shot for Louisville. Maybe it's Russ Smith. He's mm -hmm. the one who had 30 in the meeting with Kentucky earlier. But as long as they can keep it within six or eight, and all of a sudden they're only you know, one three-pointer, couple fast break hoops away from really making Kentucky feel nervous. And one of the things about this Louisville team, it does have spurtability, not in the same way that Kentucky does, but nonetheless, they can put together little six, eight, ten-point runs when they're able to defend, force misses or turnovers, and then get out in the open court. That is on Blackshear, and that is his third. That'll send Terrence Jones to the line for two. Well, I really respect this Louisville team and Rick Pitino, the way he does it. There's not a star on this club. I mean, you look at the all Big East team, first, second, and third teams, not one Louisville player. So how do they do it? They, they play the tough switching defenses, they rebound, they're physical with you, and they just kind of hang around. They're mentally extremely tough. And they've got a constant collective camaraderie and chemistry about them. Here is Russ Smith driving all the way down and had it blocked on the way up. Jang feeds the corner. He'll fire it again. Smith three, no. Jang tap outside. Siva, who has not made a shot today. That's the 14th offensive rebound for Louisville. How many times has Jang kept the possession for him? Siva, no. Jang puts it back up on another offensive rebound. And it's down to six. Well, you go back to that last possession, guys. Two missed free throws and then multiple shot opportunities for Louisville on its offensive board. An 8-1 to one run by Louisville. And a steal. And up ahead. Bahannon. Pull up. Jump for her. Oh! My goodness. Blackshear. Where did he come from? Timeout, Kentucky. And Louisville's not going away. He came out of nowhere and he came hard, high, and strong. Wayne Blackshear. Suddenly, Louisville back in it from 13 down at 45 32. It's now 46 42. So. Little run here, big run, eight nothing run in about four minutes. And I think Rick Pitino came into this game knowing 
that he was at a huge disadvantage skill wise. So the game plan has been to be physical, to attack the glass, to try to make Kentucky uncomfortable. And never have they looked more uncomfortable than right now. And Chang denies the alley oop. Chang is making some big time plays. The 22 year old sophomore from Senegal led the Big East in blocks this year, and he has really made a difference in this comeback. Spin move, Smith, floater, short. Would have trimmed it to two. That's Tig. no one cuts him off. Put back Davis. Big turn of events from one end to the other. But as Steve indicated, staying within that two, three, four possession, possession window, but still plenty of time on the clock. But how do they score on the half court? I mean, that's, that's, it's other than offensive rebounds, they really haven't been able to create anything. Well, that's been enough to keep them close. You get enough seconds, you can fill your stomach up. That is Bahan and almost got that one to drop. He'll shoot two free throws after the break. Back in New Orleans, offensive rebounding for Louisville has been the factor here, keeping them in this game. Jeng with a eight of them. And the reason they're getting offensive boards is because you see the shot blocking of Kentucky. They're going after every shot. Remember, Kentucky blocks nine shots a game. They've got five here tonight. But they're going after everything, and that's leaving them vulnerable on the weak side. Louisville taking advantage. So Bahannon hits the first free throw after Miller picked up his second. And Alpa Hannon has a chance to trim it to four. A freshman from Cincinnati. One. And 17 points, seven rebounds against Florida. Big part of that comeback victory that gained him the outstanding player status of that regional out west. And here comes the full court pressure with it back down to four. Press. And they'll have a chance to put points on the board for the first time when he'll step to the line for a couple. And you can get the latest gear for your team at the official store of the NCAA. Find great hoops merchandise at NCAA.com slash shop. That's the second foul on Jang. So here is the most outstanding player of the South Regional. He's gone now 30 minutes in this game without scoring. A point to make here, guys. That was the sixth team foul on Louisville. We've got 10 minutes to go here. One of the ways Kentucky won the first meeting, as you take a look at Peyton Siva coming back, is that they were able to have a huge advantage at the free throw line. Expect Kentucky to try to get into the bonus in its next half court possession and try to milk that free throw game as a way to thwart this effort by Louisville to come all the way back. Only one out of two by Kid Gilchrist. As we move inside, 10 minutes to go. National semifinal number one. Got the ball handling and scoring ability of Russ Smith, who can shoot the mid-range shot effectively for Louisville. Can Siva get going? Siva shot. It's good! And Siva, for the first time, able to make a basket. His first two points, it's down to three. Inside, Kid Gilchrist will go back to the line for two more attempts. And he took a nasty spill. He sure did. Took a pretty hard hit as well, Jim. But I like what Louisville's doing here. They've been beaten the last two times on the backside of the pressure, and that gives Kentucky free throws. But they are really making Kentucky uncomfortable out about that half court yeah. area in between the three point line and the half court area. That was four fouls on Blackshear. Well, that young man has had a presence here with a couple of putbacks. Spectacular. Yeah, highlight reel variety. And his future is bright again. He's only played in this his 15th game tonight. 
Do you think about that young man during the offseason? His kid Gilchrist. Alligator arms that free throw that was short and flat. And this is the tough part. When you sit out most of the first half, it's so difficult to get into the flow of things. Yep. Just six minutes for Kid Gilchrist in that opening half. And he's trying to get involved in this game, but you can see he's just not comfortable yet. Kentucky really struggling from the line. They've missed six of the last seven. And this is a good free throw shooting team. Percentage-wise, 73% on the year. But go back to a point you made. Siva can make this. He ties it. Siva with the rainbow three. And the game is tied at 49 all the way back from 13 down. Siva catching fire at just the right time. Down low, Davis. Too strong, and Davis saves it. Kid Gilchrist put back his first field goal of the game. Terrific play by Anthony Davis to stay with it. And Gilchrist, that might get him going, Steve. Yep. He finally saw one go in the basket after a couple of misses from the foul line. But meanwhile, I think Louisville believes it can win now. For the, maybe for the first time, the last couple of minutes, emotionally, they believe they can win. Turnover by Louisville. The last two possessions by Siva have been excellent. His first field goal was one where he didn't try to go all the way to the hoop. You see the reaction from Rick Pitino. And that time, the defenders went so far underneath. As you take a look at Peyton Siva's dad, that he had the wide open, all day look at the three and cast it in. You want to attack the middle of the zone. Actually, man to man now for Louisville. Well, it's tough to tell what it is. Exactly it right. Is. It can be a little amoeba like. Kid Gilchrist with a spin move, and here he goes. I know what that was. Yep. That was a spin move and a throwback. <laughs> Timeout called by Rick Patino. Clark, you said it. He needed that bucket to get himself going. Look at this move. And then the emotion afterwards. Louisville pulled even for a moment, but the Wildcats back up by four. Last five points by Kentucky have been scored by Kid Gilchrist. You see only three fouls on the Wildcats with 7.55 to go in this game. That's big, Jim. Because every common foul on Louisville sends Kentucky to the foul line. The Wildcats can continue to be fairly aggressive and have some room for a couple of fouls. As long as there aren't fouls in the act of shooting, obviously. Man to man for Kentucky. That's all we've seen from the Wildcats. Siva driving in, and there was a piece of the hand. And fouls called on Teague, his third, as Kid Gilchrist puts Kentucky back up. Time for a little virtual madness in the Big Easy. Turnover forced by Louisville. And then we highlighted Blackshear. Now, they're going to match up effectively. The Wildcats three on three, but Blackshear, left side of your screen, nobody in front of him. Go get it, young fella. In the bubble, he went about a foot over the goal <laughs> to bring that one home. Sitting down now with four fouls. We'll come out of the break with Peyton. Siva at the line to shoot two. He was the Big East Tournament most outstanding player. As the Louisville run to this point has really had such symmetry to what Connecticut did last year. Storming through the Big East. Five wins in five days. Wins the championship. Louisville had only to go with four games. Four games in four days. Won that title. Four more victories in the dance to get to this point. But when you play in the Big East, you're not afraid of anything. That's you, right. You have to play great teams night in and night out. And that's such a great setting in Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. Gets you prepared for the tournament, for the emotion of it all. And Louisville has been by far the more physical, aggressive team here, particularly on the glass where it's a 33-21 advantage. 
And just like Kid Gilchrist has started to get things going for Kentucky, how about what Siva's done here in the last yes, few sir. minutes? Yes, sir. Seven, Seven. straight. Yep. Well, Rick Pitino talked about how he played tightly in the first half. He's definitely loosened up and found his way into this game. You know, I was around this team back in December, this Louisville team, and even though they hadn't found the rhythm they've shown, as Teague lines up an open jump shot, good box out by Bahannon. But the thing that impressed me, guys, was how close-knit this group was and how much heart and tenacity and togetherness this team has. And a big part of it is the leadership of Siva and Curran. Smith. <laughs> Tap, no. A little out of control with that possession. Yeah, you're right, Jim, because they were trying to shoot over shot blockers instead of trying to move the ball or perhaps go, go through them and took a couple of errant shots. And Kid Gilchrist is in pain. He fell down and trying to shake it off now. Syracuse stays in its matchup zone, which really morphs into a man-to-man. -man. Very sophisticated defense. Kentucky having a lot of difficulty figuring it out. Terrence Jones able to figure that one out. Back at the four. Inside, no foul. And trying to save it out of bounds, it comes out to T. To the trailer, to Davis. And it rattles out, it's a charge call. His second. Wednesday on Survivor, someone's about to get played. Don't miss a new Survivor. Wednesday, only CBS. So Russ Smith back onto the floor. And Blackshear as well with the four fouls as they send to the bench. Chris Smith and Kyle Kirick. Six minutes to go. with the three and all Jones underneath well he that kid has a nice looking stroke he, sure he bounced into that shot with authority well, you can see his promise going forward he's made an impact here tonight but you anticipate him being healthy next year could, he could be special Terrence Jones too strong with the little one and Jang able to pull it down his 12th rebound he has been phenomenal Russ Smith no Missed the layup, and Jones says, get out of here. We're going the other way. Teague looking around, goes back out high. Miller, big shot, three, yes! Timeout, Louisville. They call on the senior again. He fueled the rally at the start of this half. He's got 11 for the game, seven coming to the second stanza. This is your office. This looks like a basketball court. I know. It used to be one of our server rooms. Well, what happened? Well, CDW helped us upgrade to the HP cloud system. What's an HP cloud system? An HP cloud system combines servers, software, networking, and storage in a single converged infrastructure. So we could do this. Ta-da! down to one timeout. Coach Patino last week, a week ago today when they won the West, called it the happiest day in his life, aside from the birth of his children. Never wanted a Final Four more than this one for these guys. He's loved coaching this group. Was that a jab at the Kentucky fans? He did win a national championship yeah. with the Wildcats. I would think that would be the yeah, happiest day of his life. The 96 title. Yeah. You, you think it'd be on the short list. <laughs> But I think the fact that this team wasn't supposed to make it made it pretty surprising. And I think you're right on really with that, fun for him. Yeah. No field goal for the Cardinals now for the last four minutes and almost 20 seconds. Jang, no, out with the rebound as Lamb. Fights off the pressure, gets some freedom, and Kentucky in no hurry. Up seven with 440 to play. No reason to be in a hurry. You're in the half court. You got a seven point cushion and you're in the bonus. Be strong with the ball, move the defense, and get the shots you want. Miller. It's going to be on Keurig. 
And that'll send Miller to the line for two. This year, enjoy more madness with Coke Zero. Text 2013 to 2653. Have your chance to win a trip to next year's NCAA Men's Final Four. Three on Keurig. Miller, a difference maker in this one. Bangs yeah. home the first. Yeah, you got that right. I mean, where would Kentucky be without him every time they've needed a big shot, a big play? Miller has been there, and particularly with Kid Gilchrist struggling with foul trouble and not able to make his usual contribution. Well, you see the free throw shooting for Miller in the tournament. That's about 94%. He's made 50% of his threes and 59% of his shots overall. So not doing anything that he hasn't done all tournament long here tonight. Last seven points to Kentucky. Keurig. That's Blackshear who anticipated the short shot, but it ends up in the hands of who else? Darius Miller. Report from the Kentucky bench. Kid Gilchrist with a quad injury, and they're not saying whether or not they expect him to return. Jones. And Louisville now, having missed its last seven from the floor. Siva dribbles back out of the traffic. Desperate need of a hoop here as Russ Smith has it rejected. And that'll be the under four timeout. Louisville will have to try to rally again. A look at the Capital One Cup impact performance. Look at the hustle. Anthony Davis, National Player of the Year. U.S. basketball writers yesterday gave him officially the Oscar Robertson Award. AP National Player of the Year. Wooden Award winner as well, which was announced earlier. Well deserved. Yep, and he's got 15, 11 rebounds, and five blocks. In addition to all of that effort and hustle we just saw here tonight. From the corner. Bahannon. And there he is, Davis, able to box out Chang. Louisville has not made a shot from the floor since the 9-12 mark. Mark Siva tied it at 49. Mark, you said something to me during the timeout. Louisville is one three-point shooter short offensively. Yep. And that's going to be called on Kentucky. On Lamb, had it been on Blackshear, it would have been number five. Lamb and pretty, actually Blackshear, I should say, in pretty good defensive position. I don't think John Calipari was too pleased with the decision <laughs> by Lamb. Yeah, I don't think he was pleased with the call either. Yeah, he probably was frustrated <laughs> by that, but I think he wanted Lamb to back it out. No reason to attack that early with a nine-point lead and in control of the game at this point. There's Jang with the pass for Hannon. Ends a six minute and 20 second dry spell from the floor. Well, you wonder why Kentucky is out extending themselves defensively when Louisville has not made a field right. goal in nine minutes. And then you open up a driving lane inexplicably. Particularly good... without the three point shooting that we talked about. Lamb. Rattles out. Jones. It counts. It's called on Bahannon, just too strong to be stopped. Well, he wasn't going to be denied. He missed the first one. But when he was able to gather and have a second try in, good no call there on Jang because I thought he was inside or close to the restricted area arc. So a good play on there. And then Terrence Jones cleaning up the extras. Jones, who had 15 rebounds last year in this spot in the semifinal loss to Connecticut, which tied an all-time Kentucky tournament record. But he had a tough game from the free throw line. He's already now 0 for 2 in this one. I can 0 for 3. There's 10 of 18 overall for Kentucky. See, nice oh. shot. Wow. Well, not a lot of room there. 
Well, I tell you, this effort by Louisville. Kid Gilchrist back on the floor. So impressive. They just don't go away. Need a they, big stop right here, Clark. They do, they do, Jim, but they are so tenacious in staying the course, believing that they can find a way, even though it's late, if they continue with great effort. And free throw shooting will be the difference if Kentucky is going to hang on because Louisville won't be able to get enough possessions, I don't think, without fouling some here. That was the 10th foul on Louisville. Third one on Russ Smith. So double bonus the rest of the way. Your back out. Boy, what a nice bit of playing time for Blackshear here in this environment, in this setting, to fuel him going forward into the offseason if, in fact, Louisville's not able to make a miraculous comeback here in the next 100 seconds. Seba with a dunk. They sealed Anthony Davis with Zhang. He basically just eclipsed him, and that opened up the. Lane wide for Siva. Siva with 11, all in this half. Kirik able to force the steal. But Smith driving in, and he'll go to the line. And with 1.23 to go, here comes Louisville again. You said it, Clark. They just don't go away. And Kentucky keeps missing, like, they'll make one out of two at the line at best. And Siva gets the dunk, but it was the seal from Jang exactly. that made that play. To me, Jang has been the player of the game here for either side. His work on the glass, mm -hmm. his presence around the rim, it has been something else. 12 boards. That was the fourth foul, by the way, on T. Now, Russ Smith can cut it to four. Well, if he knocks down this free throw, it'll be interesting to see how Kentucky handles what you know will be full court pressure here from Louisville. Oh, man. Ball tapped around, and Davis. Looking for help. Gets it over to Jones. You don't have to foul if you're Louisville yet. You got one more chance. Oh, oh again. It was Davis after it was slightly deflected by Jang. Caught it one-handed and slammed it down back to seven. 18 for Davis. Siva. Not this time. Jang tried to block the lob pass. He got a little fingertip on it. He sure did, but that kid there, Anthony Davis, has marvelous hands and the ability to adjust to any kind of passes that come his way. Last time out called by Louisville. The kind of stat sheet we haven't seen since Danny Manning and the Miracles in 1988. Danny Manning, an assistant on the Kansas bench, will soon be the new head coach at Tulsa, but he'll be up here on the second game and be on the floor as Davis, 18 points, 13 rebounds, five blocks. Try for a quick steal, force a turnover, but then you've got to foul immediately, I think. T gets it to Lamb. Kid Gilchrist. Oh! Oh, how good is he in transition? Nobody, that better. Press. Nobody better in the country. All seven of his points in this half after playing only six minutes in the first half. Blackshear got the three, bangs it in. Back down to six with 32 seconds. A battle for the Commonwealth. It has been a good one. Kentucky never able to fully pull away. Get Gilchrist with two more. How about Anthony Davis bringing the ball up the floor against pressure? Unbelievable skills. Been a terrific effort by this Cardinals team, guys. It really was. I mean, marvelous effort. Just not enough firepower offensively. But they did everything else within the game plan, I thought. Kentucky wins the state championship and will play Monday night for the national championship.
this basketball Armageddon. These two rivals meeting on this stage. It was so intense. There was one stretch they wouldn't even play for 24 years until the dream game brought them back together in the tournament back in 83. Now it's an annual matchup. But this one was historic to meet in the final four and the final score is Kentucky 69 and Louisville 61. Coming up next, it's the NCAA National Semifinal Show presented by Capital One. Followed by our second national semifinal between Ohio State and Kansas. Wildcats advance. All right, it was an unbelievable scene here in New Orleans as we're joined by Anthony Davis, another spectacular performance. And uh, Coach Cal, this was some game. You had the 13-point lead early in the second half. Louisville fought all the way back, pulled even at 49. This guy over here, then Kid Gilchrist also down the stretch. And Miller made some monster plays. How did you guys do it, you felt? I, I thought we'd dig deep, but you also, Terrence Jones came up with three or four big rebounds. But you got to give Louisville credit. They offensive rebounded against us better than any team we played this year. They never stopped playing. They got up into our bodies, created turnovers, and gave themselves a chance to win. All the intensity that that rivalry always brings. It was out there on the floor, wasn't it, tonight? And then I had my big man here saying, Cal, throw me the ball. Tell him <laughs> to throw me the ball. So he did great. And when they did throw you the ball, a couple of those lobs, with a little authority there, my friend, you dunked them down. I could tell while you were seeing your reaction when the game ended, how much this one meant to you. Uh, it meant a lot. You know, we won a game closer to our dream and our goals. But we got to come out Monday night and just come out here and perform. You know, we can't come out like the day school. We got to go out with a lot of energy. What did it feel like for you being inside the dome, all this energy to have a performance like that? 18 points, 14 rebounds, five blocks, a stat line with all three combined we haven't seen in a Final Four since Danny Manning back in 1988. So it's our fans. Our fans are great to us. And we just go ahead and play ball. You know, our fans travel a long way. And we want to go ahead and give them a show and give them what they want. It was a national championship. Well, we watched your mom and dad a few times, and we're looking at them right now, and they are thrilled with that performance. Congratulations, Anthony. We'll see you on Monday night. Thank you. And Coach Cal, championship bound again for a championship game Monday night. How about this? Oh, it's great stuff. I'm proud of this team. They're coming together. They've taken on shots and runs like Louisville did today, and they've held their own, so I'm proud of them. Congratulations, John. Congratulations. Kentucky on to the national championship game, and let's send it back to Greg Gumbel.